and boom. Blue Suburban. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Kayla and welcome back to the Sims 4 Builder's Bible, my comprehensive guide to building given to you by a small child who is not that good at building. But I'm gonna try because I posted one of these like two years ago. It did really well. People seem to really like it. They ask me for updates on it all the time. And I've gotten a lot better at building since then. And I think it is about time that I finally come on and give you a better and updated builder's Bible for The Sims 4. So today I'm gonna teach you guys how to build a house in The Sims and give you all of my tips and tricks and like kind of my thought process for building a house because I think seeing how I do it might help you. I don't know, I've got like cheat codes and things to show you. I've gotta show you like just how I get started because that's the hardest part, isn't it? And also give you some roofing tips because Listen, we all know the hardest part of building a house in The Sims is the roof. I'm gonna start off by showing you guys what I call the art of the fancy box. Now, what does that mean? I'll explain. Every single house that I build starts off as a box that I then make fancy. And by that, I mean that I build a box and then I add on various bump outs and things onto that box to then make it fancy and sort of make it have a little bit more interest, make it maybe a little bit better, whatever that might mean. And so we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna go in and we're gonna create ourselves a fancy box. I'm gonna make a two-story house to show you guys how I do that and then I'll show you how I do the floor plan and the roof and all these things just so that you can kind of get an idea of how I build all of my houses. But look, I had just the one <laughs> little box and I've now gone in and I've added all of this additional stuff onto the outside of it just to try and make it slightly more interesting. Might even put like a big old porch in the back of the house. Kind of how I've done these fancy box additions onto the outside, it sort of builds the floor plan itself. At least you'll see that hopefully in a bit when I when I finish up the build. But all these little boxes kind of help you like envision a floor plan as you're building them, at least in my mind. And then it kind of helps me with the finished product when I'm done because then I already know like what I was aiming for and like what it's gonna look like when it's finished. And so it is not as difficult to complete the build. Now, <laughs> I understand it looks a little bit weird right now, but that's the whole first floor. And then the second floor, I start off again by taking that same first fancy box that I had originally, which, you know, looks a little bit ridiculous now, I, I know. And then you go in and you just, you add on to it. And you maybe extend some parts of it. You might add like a chimney. Chimneys make everything look better, trust me. I learned this the hard way. And then it sort of helps you kind of see the house come together, right? Again, it looks really weird right now because it's this whole weird build with all these random bump outs and things like that. But you'll see when I put the roof on that it's kind of come together into a whole house. I like to make the second floor smaller than the first floor. It just makes more sense to have it kind of sitting on like smaller area of the house. And then I also like to keep everything kind fairly symmetrical. Not completely though. You can see there's bump outs on either side, but one's a little bit smaller, one has a chimney. And so, it's symmetrical to an extent, but not perfectly. I think it's really hard to do floor plans when it's symmetrical completely because it doesn't really split up very well. Like one big giant box is really hard to break up into a floor plan of like, if there's like two stories especially, like how do you make that into a floor plan? Like it's just, it's very difficult. But when you have this weird shaped house, it kind of justifies weird shaped floor plans for one. And for two, again, it kind of like gives you a guide to where to draw the walls. I think I might put it up on a foundation also because foundations make everything look more finished in my experience. And then we're gonna go ahead and attempt to do the roofing. Now the roofing is oftentimes the hardest part. I can assure you of this. However, in my experience, having like the fancy box you've done, it kind of gives you a guideline for where to put the roof. And again, we're gonna go back to our original fancy box. The original, well, the original empty box <laughs> was right here. And we're gonna roof that part first, okay? Because it's that's the original, like you see how the whole house is kind of based on that box. You can see it easier on the first floor because there's still stuff there. But we roof that part first, that's the beginning part. And you then go on to roof all the biggest parts first after that. So I'll put like a gabled roof right here in the biggest part of the back of the house. If you wanna kind of, if it's clipping like this in a weird way, you can hold shift and then drag that part back. And then it leaves like a overhang on this side, but not on this side. So it 
meshes together really well. Do the same thing in the front with the biggest part, just like that. I'm gonna have to obviously scoot that back one so it meshes really well. And then you go ahead and it gets easier once you've done more of the build to like see where it all goes. But I put gable roofs up on the top always. And if you're seeing it look kind of boring or flat, you might wanna go ahead and add in some more like fancy bump outs and like dormers and stuff to, to add some interest. So you'll just put like another roof bit right there. Maybe I'll put another one right here. Kind of drag it across so it goes onto the other side. We finish up the chimney so it goes to the second floor and then put a little half wall up there on top so it looks all finished off. I might even put like a real chimney object in there so it looks more realistic. And then to kind of finish off this, the rest of these kind of weird bits, I'll use these half gabled roofs and I'll drag them all the way across. Look at that, look at that. And then you kind of lower it down and I like to pull it back and then tuck it into the roofs behind it. So it kind of disappears back there. A lot of times for things like this, where it looks kind of weird how it's like that, I might put up like more second floor so it tucks into something. Or, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You can put a roof until right here. You see how it's kind of, it's not quite tucked in there, but like it's, and then you duplicate it. This is, it's so, it's kind of finicky to do this, but then you duplicate it and then you make sure it's tucked in at the top and then you can, move that part back and then you'll see, oops, gotta pull that part back there. But then you can kind of hide it that way by using two different roof pieces to make it look like run, one roof piece. That's a little bit complicated and not that important, but you can always do that if you want to. And then all the roof bits are all tucked in and hidden away. Doesn't it look good? Might put another one of these like this. I also think that a key to doing this and making it look good is having them all be, all the different pieces, at least all the different matching pieces are at the same angle. So you can see all of these gabled roof bits are all at the same angle and all of these half ones are at the same angle. It just makes the house look more uniform. Oh, that's clipping. <laughs> make sure we hide that one away. And then I just kind of go in and make everything match on all the sides of the build. So again, it's pretty symmetrical looking. And I think that it's really pretty. I'm a little bit biased, but like, I love this house already. And I've, I built it in what, like 10 minutes? And it's like your classic suburban house. <laughs> and this is like the most typical Simsy build you'll ever find. And you go and grab some roof trim, maybe some shingles, paint the house, and then boom, you've got a blue suburban. <laughs> a lot of times with these builds, I like to put columns on each of the corners. I'll use this get together column and put it on every corner so that it looks more finished. And then boom you've got an actually finished house. As far as windows go, I think people have a tendency to overplace windows. Trust me, I did the same thing. But I'm gonna show you guys how I would place windows in this house and you can kind of maybe gauge how to do it based on that. But I like to say that less is more when it comes to windows. So I'd probably place them like this, kind of casual stuff. Get a pretty front door in there, maybe even like, oh, I don't know, a fancy bay window up there on the second floor for some added interest. A couple windows there, a couple windows there. It's really up to you where you wanna place them. I think this is almost too many windows in this area, but when we do the floor plan, we can kind of change our minds and decide. A lot of times I will have entire sides of houses that have no windows. And it really depends, like I might not put any up on the sides of the house upstairs, on any of the sides. It depends on how the floor plan looks, but I think that works better. We can decide when we actually place the rooms and stuff. That is very typical of me to not have any windows on the sides of the house. Maybe a little back door over there onto the little patio area. And we can do some finishing touches, like add in some columns and, and fences and things to the porch. I like to place them where the corners of the rest of the house are so you can see like in line with this and in line with this part. Get a little fence in there, maybe a staircase and boom. Blue Suburban. <laughs> okay, now onto the interior. Floor plans and roofing are like the hardest parts of building a house in The Sims. Trust me, I know. But we're gonna make this work, okay? We're gonna use all of our existing weird bump outs and stuff kind of as a base to draw it as well. That makes everything a lot easier, trust me. Also, the staircase gives you a great guide. It kind of creates a line that helps break things up because the whole upstairs is kind of based like around the stairs, you know? And so once you have the stairs placed, you can kind of figure out where everything else goes. I'm gonna place a bedroom like right here I think I can put a bathroom on this side, a bedroom right here, okay, bathroom right there, we can get a bedroom here, and a bedroom here, okay, team, I think we did it. I'm gonna make this bathroom a tiny bit bigger, just because of the fact that it's the master bathroom, but we have a hall bath, we have a kids room, we have a kids room, we have a kids room and a master bedroom. I also really enjoy how weird the shapes of these rooms all are. I might even make this a tiny bit weirder because then it could be a door better to that room. But I like how weird the shapes all are and I like how there's access to bathrooms and stuff from all the rooms. But you'll see that there isn't a window in this bathroom or in this bedroom and that's really inconvenient because obviously um, you should have a window in your bedroom. 
So we're gonna place one right here. It's kind of a weird spot, but it is on the side of the house So it doesn't really matter if you look at real houses the windows are in the weirdest spots on the side of the house Like just look at a real house for a second and think about how ugly it would be in the sims Like even like your house even probably where you live like just think about it in the sims and you'll be like Ugh. <laughs> Like the way that we place windows in real life. It's so weird. I hate I hate how it looks, but it's fine I'm gonna leave that like that. I'll just place some doors around the place and boom the entire upstairs floor plan is done I'm gonna block it off a little bit and make this into a tiny sitting area I think I'm gonna block this off and let it be like a study slash office area and then I'm gonna put a weird bathroom <laughs> right there Okay, it makes for a little hallway that kind of separates I'll put the kitchen kind of right here and then like a dining table in here We have a hallway study some more seating and stuff and then we have the bathroom and then it kind of breaks everything up and creates You know a nice open ish floor plan put some doors in to block off the rooms and archways to open the rest of them because archways make everything feel better. <laughs> I know this hallway area is kind of weird, but it's so realistic and I kind of like it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. Just to kind of show you guys how I've split it up. I'll put hardwood floor like everywhere just so it kind of helps us see what we've got going on here. I'll place some lights too, just to give us an idea of how things are gonna get placed. Hang on guys, give me a second. I put in like some railings on the stairs and some lights around the place. And just to kind of show you guys again, I'm gonna place some like temp furniture just to show you how the layouts would work in my mind. Actually, you know what? Forget this weird study thing. You could have like a formal dining room right in here if you wanted to. You could even kind of close off the room a bit more just so you have like a separated kitchen area and then have a dining table in here. But I like, the Never mind. The master has made a mistake again. I'm keeping it this way. <laughs> Maybe even with an archway, wait. Ooh, a concept. I base a lot of the sizing of my rooms, this is kind of weird, on where I can place rugs. And this is like my favorite sized rug. So if I can place this rug down in a room, you see how it fits perfectly in there? Then it's the right size room. <laughs> so that's for the dining room table. You can put that same rug in the living room right there. Obviously I placed some like better looking furniture, but this is kind of how I imagine the living room would be shaped and laid out. So you can kind of see how we have this, maybe like a chair in the corner here. I might put a bookshelf on that wall. Bookshelves are great for filling up space. I pictured maybe a desk right here. Again, obviously colors are not great in this, but like you're kind of seeing how I would lay out furniture. Perfect size for a dining table. Put six chairs around it. I'm upsetting myself with my furniture choices. It's so ugly, but like you get the vibe that I'm going for, right? <laughs> I put counters like around that area and maybe even like a little breakfast nook back here. And that's kind of how I lay out the house. I put more furniture in and stuff, but these are kind of like the big things, like the big ticket items that I would place down. And that's how I would do it. So that's the house that I have built, you guys. That's how I build my houses and kind of the, the mindset that I have in doing them. I'm going to show you guys quickly, though, some little tips and tricks that I have as far as, like, building and decorating and other little cheat codes that you can use because these are where they get you, okay? I get asked all the time how I delete more than one wall at once. If I was going to be like, hey, you know what? Actually, I want this all to be one big room and I just delete all those walls at once. If you hold control and draw the wall again, it deletes it. Otherwise, you'd have to like individually bulldoze each wall. But if you hold control and draw over it, you can delete it all at once. That is a lifesaver. Say I wanted to put like maybe some sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe I wanted carpet in my dining room area, right? And I have this weird like, where does the dining room end? And I wanna put some diagonal tile right there. If you hold control and F, you can get a diagonal tile, floor tile, and then you can do it like that. You can also use the little like carrot arrow keys to rotate your wood floors if you want them to go like this instead. Like I put, horizontal flooring on this porch and vertical in here. Use the little carrot keys to rotate the floorboards and you can kind of have them go in different directions. Say you wanted to, for some reason, freely rotate this table, like you want it to be at like this ever so slightest angle, okay? If you have the Sims 3 camera on, you press this button for the Sims 3 camera and you hold Alt, you can freely rotate things. Instead of just being on the grid, you can sort of rotate freely by holding alt. That works well for like placing like a plant nicely in the corner, or maybe if you wanted to have like a nice chair kind of off in a corner and just have it be like slightly rotated, hold alt, lifesaver. You'll see I'm kind of moving things around, randomly placing them. I have a cheat called bb.moveobjectson on right now. Without it, I can't place things wherever I want them to, but if you type bb.moveobjectson, I can place things wherever I want them. Like if I want it in the middle of this couch, I can have it there. You can also raise and lower objects. So say I wanted to place like this plant on this shelf, but it won't place there. If I hold control and nine, I can raise the plant up and then I can put it on the shelf myself. Get it? If I wanted a really big plant, I could like 
size it up by using the right bracket key. If I wanted a really tiny, tiny plant, I can size it down with the left bracket key, which works great for making things that don't necessarily fit places work better. Like, say I wanted to use this plant on this shelf, it's kind of big, but if I size it down one and then raise it up, it fits really well on the shelf like that, see? Or you could have like, I don't know, a tiny toilet or something if you have, I, I, like, either way, left bracket key for that. It works good for paintings too, because say you wanted to use like this painting, but it's kind of small, make it bigger, fills the wall so much more nicely. Or if it's too big, you can kind of size it down because some paintings are enormous. Like this one is kind of big, size it down one, fits better. I have one more tip that's kind of a weird one, but is a lifesaver that I recently learned about. So I'm gonna explain it to you. It's about trim again, but like, <laughs> oh boy, it's a, it's a very helpful one. Anything you wanna do to just one side of a wall in The Sims, if you wanted to just say like use one side of this side to go back instead of this one, if you just regularly hold it, it moves them both out. But if you just, if you hold shift, it only drags out the one side, right? Same thing goes for placing trim, okay? Because if I wanted to place like this trim, like over here, you see how it, it kind of puts it, like it, it has like a weird room system where it puts it like all over the place. Say I wanted it only on the inside, only on those two walls without it getting over here. If you hold shift, you can place it by individual wall. And so instead of it going around everywhere, it places just on that wall there. And so it doesn't like get everywhere and ruin your build and look ugly and stuff. So that's holding shift. It's a godsend. Some quick little cheats though. I showed you guys bb.show hidden objects. There's also bb.ignore gameplay unlocks entitlement. This one's kind of wild, but this one makes it so that any objects that are career locked. So for example, this thing, I couldn't usually grab this object, but I have that cheat on. So now I can place it here. There's some other things too, like random lights and stuff. Anything with this weird, like fancy, spirally border is locked when you don't have that cheat on, but then you can access anything in the build catalog that way. And speaking of things in the build catalog, this one's kind of wild. BB.show hidden objects. This one allows you to access everything in the build catalog. It opens up a ton of things that are hidden, like locked behind that wall. So for example, I could grab like just a full on apple seed this way. Look at this, I've got access to all these, like just apples in general. I have actual apples, I've got an apple tree. Like you can get all these things that way. So if you search in this menu, if you search debug, you're gonna find a ton of stuff. Like I'm talking a ton, I'm not even gonna show you at all, but like you can grab like anything your Sims have access to, you can grab this way. The fish, the books, the elements, like the collectibles, all these things you can make plant wise, like all the little decorations that your Sims can make, like anything your Sims have access to, it's in debug. It's just kind of hard to like scroll through and find stuff, but it is there. And last but not least, say you're Bob Pancakes and you're like going over to Nancy Landgrab's house. Here I am chilling with the Landgrabs and I'm like, you know what? I really want to have a knight statue that I can steal. And you're like, oh no, wait, they don't have a knight statue. What am I gonna do? Well, bb.enable free build lets you build on any lot. You can see now I can press the little build icon and then I can place whatever I want. I can infest the land grab house with lamps if I wanted to. Or I could just bulldoze it. <laughs> you want a house? Um, too bad, Nancy. So those, my friends, are my best and most important tips and tricks for you for building in The Sims 4. As a quick little recap, I'm gonna tell you guys, build a fancy box Roof the largest area first, build small and make it bigger. It's always easier to make a house that's small look good. Big houses are really hard to decorate and make them look nice. Make it small and then add on if you need it. And also less is always more. Same thing, it's so much easier to make a small house than a big house, trust me. I've learned this from experience. <laughs> Why do I build one story suburban homes? Because big houses are impossible. But again, you guys, I'm no expert. I just build a lot so I have some advice that I can give you. If you liked my builds, hey, go ahead and subscribe. I make speed builds every single week. I post two a week, Wednesday and Sunday. So if you want to check out any of that stuff, I'll link some down below. I'll also link my last Builders Bible down below. I also have a few like more specialized ones on just roofing and floor plans and stuff. So I'll link those. I've just got a ton of stuff going on. But thank you for watching. Make sure to go ahead and leave a like and comment and subscribe and do all those fun YouTube things. And in case you guys didn't know, I post new videos every single day. And so I will see you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. The last time I made one of these, I got called a narcissist. So hopefully I don't get that again. But hey, um, you're not wrong.